welcome to this webinar on some of the latest research that we've done under our Microgen Insight service, specifically looking at uh, owner occupiers in the UK market and how they are currently engaged with Microgen, and specifically looking at financial propositions and what impact that may have with customers in the UK. So the agenda for today's short webinar will be a short introduction um, of Delta and the speakers today, um, and then we'll focus on looking at owner occupier attitudes and perceptions, and also their attitudes to financial propositions. In terms of speakers today, my name is Andy Bradley, I'm the director at Delta. I'm joined today by Pip Hardy. Hello. And Stephen Morrill. Hey. Stephen is a expert at E.ON, um, customer and market insight expert. Stephen is, a, is immersed in, in these uh, customer questions. He's been at E.ON for about four years and before that was a, an expert analyst at uh, Unilever. For those that aren't familiar with Delta, we're an energy consultancy um, focusing on heat and distributed energy. So all of the technologies you see highlighted here in the orange bubble are the technologies that we look at in great detail. We work primarily for energy companies, large utility companies, and the manufacturers of many of the technologies that you see listed here. We provide market and commercial support and analysis to our clients, primarily looking at the strategy and tactics and competitor issues in the market today. We offer a number of research services, of which the Microgen Insight Service is one, and we do a lot of consultancy work for clients on a private confidential basis. In terms of the Microgen Insight Service, which we're showing some of the, the research today with you, um, this consists of a number of ele elements. Part of it is looking at owner occupiers, which we're focusing on today, but also within this research service we do work with other property owners such as uh, registered social landlords, social housing, building developers and self-builders. We also look at a lot of the techno-economic analysis in the market in terms of payback and running costs of different types of technology across the UK's housing stock and we do a lot of detailed research on the supply chain, particularly looking at the installers and the role that they have in the, in the market. And all of this will be used to develop ongoing forecasts for this really quite interesting and dynamic market. This research is available um, currently, so if you're interested for more details, please use our contact details on the website or at the end of this presentation. So now I'd like to move on to the, some, sharing some of the results from the research we've done recently over the summer, and I'd like to hand over to Pip to just talk through a few of the slides and describe the research that we completed. Okay, thank you. So as part of the Microgen Insight Service this year, we have recently published results from our online stated preference survey with 652 higher income owner occupiers in the UK. This survey has analysed owner occupier awareness and attitudes towards Microgen technologies and government incentives. It also tests the preference and prioritisation of financial propositions to support the purchase, installation and maintenance of Microgen. From this information, we've assessed the impact of these potential financial packages um, and, have, and look at the impact this would have on unlocking the microgen market. We've been tracking awareness and appeal of microgen and government incentives, as well as the likelihood of installing microgen for the last three years. So here shows some te the technology awareness in 2014. So looking at the results in the last year, three years, we found a consistent picture albeit not very encouraging, since microgen awareness and appeal to owner occupiers has been relatively stable. The highest awareness, unprompted and prompted, is found for solar technologies. But awareness for all other technologies has not shown any significant upward trend in the last three years. The appeal of microgen technologies has also not improved over the last three years. Appeal is lower than awareness across the board, however, Solar technologies, again, lead in appeal. But all the other microgen technologies are thought of as less appealing. Government incentives are key drivers for the microgen market. However, this research shows that awareness and appeal of government incentives is generally quite low. 
the RHI has the lowest appeal and the Green Deal has the, the largest awareness. So despite this large awareness of the Green Deal, it also is the least appealing. Of moderate appeal is the RHI, and the most appealing government incentive is the feed-in tariff. So in overall terms, I think the trends in the research that from this study that we've just completed, but also building on the pre two previous studies, um, shows that the awareness of microgen technologies isn't really improving and the appeal isn't really improving. At the same time, the awareness of government incentives is low and actually many customers don't find them very appealing either. So it's not a particularly encouraging dynamic that we see in the market from this research. So Steve, thank you for joining us uh, on the webinar today. We very much appreciate having your input and, and time uh, to comment on these results. I mean, in terms of, of your perspective as a, as a expert in customers and customer behavior on, on these types of, on this type of finding, I mean, what do you think is stopping customers getting engaged with microgen? Well, I always come back to, uh, the, to the start point, which for me is that customers already have a good solution. Uh, you know, by and large, the mass market consumer have, they have, they have the national grid, they can, they can flick a switch and the light comes on, or, the, or they can turn their heating on very simply. So they already have a solution. Now, I, I know that, you, you know, we, we think a lot about uh, de debating the fact that energy is very expensive in this country, um, and, and that's kind of quite a binary debate. But, but overall, I think people do have a solution that they're used to, and they know how to make it work. And that's the starting point. So I think what we need to do to increase customer engagement with some of these some of these new solutions is make sure we're offering a better benefit or or doing something more cheaply than the current offering and, and I come back to that basic point every time so you, you've got a really good system in place currently but what we're trying to do on top of that is offer solutions that, that I think are seen as quite expensive in terms of their upfront cost customers also see them as, as, as new technologies that are that are relatively untested in their in their mind and, and difficult to understand. So if you talk about heat pumps, for instance, it's it quite there's a credibility gap there. How can you get heat from the cold air outside of the home? So there's, there's three there's three issues there. I think the, the solutions are currently seen as quite expensive. Customers see them as untested and difficult to understand in the face of um, an existing solution that works well for them. I, I mean, I would say that you do start to see some technologies emerging. So LED lighting, for instance, is starting to break through into a mass market presence. But overall, that, that's my take on this, that the, 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 the solutions we're working on are just a bit too untried and untested. Yes, yeah, certainly we see consistently in our, our research upfront cost is a key issue um, for customers. So totally agree with your comment there, Steve. Um, I mean, from the perspective of a large utility, what are, what, what are you, uh, Eon, or what do you see utilities generally doing to try and drive demand of microgen and address some of those barriers that you mentioned just then? Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're very much trying to find new benefits uh, that, that, we, that we can deliver. Um, so you, you might look at emotional benefits like offering peace of mind or reliability to people because we know from, from a psychological point of view that those kind of benefits are really quite motivating to people, but they're quite new, I think, in the energy industry. We don't really think about that, that kind of thing too often. Um, we always think about more tangible benefits like reduced bills, which, which are, are, you know, are important and we do look at that, but I think we also need to start looking at some of the broader, maybe softer benefits that we can offer to people, and we're certainly working on that. Um, and, and we're also looking at the whole value proposition from the customer's point of view. So, you, you know, how can we, how can we make um, things like customer journeys simpler? How can we make value for people more tangible and easy to understand? We, we look at customer trends, so some of the macro trends about how people live their lives these days and whether our technologies can fit into those. Um, so we, we're doing that. We're doing quite a lot of quite a lot of things about just trying to bring the customer to the centre of everything we do and, and really improve our kind of customer empathy, if you can call it that. And I, and I think that's a culture change that, that we're going through, and I think the whole industry is probably going through that as well, really. Okay, thanks, Steve. Do, I mean, how optimistic are you that these trends that we see here can be can be broken over the next year or so? Yeah, I mean, I I, I do I do think. I mean, if you look at LED lighting, you know, in, in the UK now, that's 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 kind of everywhere now. Um, so there are examples of low energy solutions coming through and breaking through into the mass market because they fit 
people's lifestyles. They're easy to install. They're relatively easy to understand. And, and you know, they're, they're, they're coming down in price all the time. So, that's, so LED lighting is a good example. If we can apply the rules that we've learned from that technology to some of the others, then I think absolutely we can, we can make this market move. Yeah, okay, absolutely. And I think heat is certainly one of the more difficult uh, parts of the home to compete with because fundamentally the gas boiler is a very efficient and cost-effective technology. So the bar is set very high yeah. for low carbon heat, yeah. out of the doubt. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Steve, for your comments there. Pip, I'll, I'll hand back to you now and perhaps ask you to just highlight some of the findings from our research into financial propositions with own occupiers. Okay. So as part of the online survey, we also asked um, for the preference of financial propositions. And we're really trying to answer the questions, are financial propositions likely to trigger the uptake of microgen? Simple answer from our research is yes, if they are structured right. We tested five financial propositions. The first is product for free. This is where the technology is provided free to the customers, and the provider would keep the RHI or feeding tariff whilst the end user receives free electricity or heat. Leasing or rental schemes are similar to car leasing, where a technology is, again, installed um, in a customer's home and it's paid for on a monthly basis. The payment tariff relates to the feeding tariff or the renewable heat incentive, and that's a government incentive, where the upfront cost of the system has to be paid and it's paid back over a period of about seven years, in the case of the RHI. There are also two private finance options. The first, an interest-free loan, and the second, a low interest of around 2% loan. There was interest across the board in all of the offerings, um, but by far, um, the winner by a long stretch was the product for free. I think the main conclusion from this research is that offering a financial proposition will help boost the microgen market. In terms of impact, Today, there are around 30,000 microgen installations. If financial propositions are structured correctly and marketed properly, they could more than quadruple the market, which would greatly enhance microgen sales. We do have a lot more data and detailed information um, that's available to subscribers, including other features, such as whether the financial propositions should include maintenance and warranties. Um, if you're interested in finding out this extra information, please do feel free to contact me. OK, thank you, Pip. Some very interesting results there. Steve, do you, do you expect product for free offers to start becoming commonplace in the heating market? Yes, yes, I do. I've, I've spoken to a few of my colleagues about that. And, and, and you know, I, I think we, we know that upfront cost is a real barrier. Um, so any kind of creative solutions that can bring that upfront cost down um, are, are bound to be appealing. And I, and I think product for free is you know is um is, is a is a is a real interesting proposition. We it doesn't mean that we as industry players need to look for new value streams clearly that we can use to offset um, that that free element. Um, but I think those value streams are available to us if we can look creatively for them. So for instance, can we get value from user data and um, so usage data? Um, can we get value from demand side management? Things like that that, that actually re that actually recover the cost of the technology. So, yes, I do. I, I do think that uh, we're, we're probably going to see more of this. A, so we were talking about trends before as well, and we've we've, we've seen, of course, the freemium model, which is used quite widely in a number of um, markets, whereby you offer the core product for free, but you recoup the value by some ancillary product attached to it. And my favourite example of that is those capsule coffee machines, where you you, uh, you, you, you buy the coffee machine itself relatively cheaply, but of course you're tied in to the capsules uh, for the coffee itself. So there are a number of examples of that freemium model out there, and I, and I think if we can look creatively for um, models like that, then I think we can bring more free offers into the marketplace, into the heating market. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a good observation, and perhaps printers might be another one. Buying a, a small yeah. printer is very cheap, but every time you buy the ink, it costs more than the printer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, yeah, it's an interesting model, and then certainly from our perspective, we do see some examples in the market. Flow boiler, for example, in the UK is, is starting to develop its, its, its sort of boiler for free concept. And yeah. Pip, I know you've seen well, obviously in the PV market, there's this tech activity. For free, product for free, tech for free in the PV market. And um, we saw the, the boom a few years ago when that was offered. Also, we're starting to see the commercial PV product for free following the, the government PV strategy. Um, also, as part of our work, we talk to quite a lot of different manufacturers and utilities, 
um, who are all quite intrigued with the idea of these financial propositions and all starting to think about what propositions they may be able to offer in the near future. Absolutely. And perhaps a sort of final question today or the point of discussion I'm particularly interested in is around the connected home. And we, here at Delta we've just launched a new research service on the connected home which is proving to be a very topical and interesting uh, subject for many people in the, in the industry, by which I mean the energy industry, the heating industry, heating controls industry, heating equipment manufacturers. Quite a wide range of stakeholders see potential value and opportunities in, in the connected home. And certainly it seems to us this could act as a, as a trigger for changing customer relationships with the way that they use energy, the ways that they understand how they use energy. And that could be a trigger itself for the, for the energy market. Do, do you have any, any thoughts on, on that, Steve? Is your experience telling you anything about how customers might, might react to, to this type of technology development? Yeah, I mean, I, I think our experience would reflect exactly what you've just said, Andy. And, and again, there's a, there's, a, there's a core trend behind this one as well, and that's the fact that I think customers are interested in data more and more now. So if, if you think about... I don't know, the, the, I, I always look at the miles per gallon indicator on my car, for instance, which tells me how my driving's performing. If I go for a run, I take my mobile phone that tells me how fast I'm going, how far I've run, um, you know, how much height I've gained, all that kind of stuff. So there's a real drive amongst consumers to get data on many aspects of their daily life. And I think the connected home really fits that. And energy is a really great gateway service, if you will, into the connected home so people can understand how their homes are using energy and can actually use that data to optimize the home's performance. And I think that really gives energy an opportunity to open up this connected home um, market, if you will. Um, and it, it would allow the energy industry to kind of build, absolutely build its relationship with its customers. We can offer new services that genuinely add real value to people. And, and I think that's a really important opportunity. So, so yes, I think that's really going to be very important in our industry going forward. Okay, thank, thank you, Steve, and I'm sure we'll be doing further webinars on, on that topic because I think it uh, absolutely it is one that cuts across many players in the industry, and, and you know I think people have talked about the smart home for many years, but I think uh, many people believe that its time is, is now arriving in reality. So, Steve, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for everyone uh, for listening thank to you. this thank short, you. short webinar. Um, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, this draws upon the research from our Microgen Insight Service. Um, all of the data and detail behind this research is available to our subscribers, and if you're interested to learn more, please contact me or, or Pip or Stephen Ashurst, Product Manager. Our contact details are, are shown here on the screen. So thank you for your time today. Thanks once again to you, Steve, for your contribution and thoughts, and goodbye.